on tonight's show, we're talking about the Deadpool movie confirmed. We're talking about the new series Gotham and how it's going to be the most amazing best series of all time ever in history existence. And we're talking the Tokyo Game Show. Stay tuned. I don't know. How much did I go over? I don't know. Well, I, can, I, I can't hear crap. Close, right? It was one of the greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Do you think so? Beverly Hills Cop, RoboCop crossover needs to happen. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Words From My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. Uh, oh, no. Sound of... Chewie's far away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's that, Chewie? Couldn't hear you. Say it again. Uh, see, that shows his lightning speed, because he was really about, like, three miles away. We just heard his bellow from there, and then he caught up in that little bit of time. Because Chewie, he didn't know he's he's very fast. He might not look it, but he's very fast. Extremely fast. That's why he wins the platinum medal at the Olympics every year for um, every running thing. <laughs> yes, the marathon. Most people don't realize it, but he ran that in 15 minutes once. So, yeah, those guys from Kenya, they don't really stand a chance. Even though they or, usually win those anyway. They get the gold. He gets the platinum. It's true. I mean, they... The platinum. Most people don't realize about the platinum because it just automatically goes chewy every time, just because he's. But we've talked about that before. We'll talk about that again, I'm sure. But welcome to the show tonight. We are doing our entertainment show, as you saw from the intro. We've got a couple really cool things. Something I've been excited about coming up on TV, um, and I guess something Brennan was excited about. We'll throw in there too. <laughs> just, I guess you know yeah, that, that yeah, thing. Yeah. It didn't make it to the intro, but we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. But let's start off this week the same way we start off every week, except for last week, with the horrible movie of the week. <laughs> and we're actually going to change things up a little bit than what we normally do, because what we normally do is give a really long and drawn-out review, but that takes up too much time. And it can get boring, so we're not going to bore you. I'm just going to give you seven reasons why you should not watch this movie. And the horrible movie of the week was Dragonfire from, yeah. That's an awesome movie. I don't know what you're talking about. It has a cool title. It does. It does. But when it only gets one and a half stars on Netflix, you know you're in for a bad movie. So first reason you should not watch this movie is because it was by Phase 4 Films. Now, I don't know if you know that studio, but they have appeared on Horrible Movie of the Week more times than any other movie studio out there. What do they do? What What else have they done on Horrible Movie? Uh, Curse of the Dragon Slayer. I don't want to go through the whole list. They do a lot uh, of dragon I, stuff. I, I believe gotcha. they did Cyber Get In. Uh, and, and, and they're very misleading. They throw dragon in all their titles, and there's really not many dragons. So that's... But, all right, we'll get into that. But So um, number two reason you should not watch this movie is any movie that has sun filters in it. And when I say sun filters, I mean they're trying to make you think it's night, and they do some weird things with the camera to, to, to like, uh, not, not with the camera, but in post-editing to make you think that, oh, it's dark. They, like, bring down the brightness of the screen or something. But when you still see, like, bright reflections off of, uh, you know, armor and stuff, you know it's not nighttime. So, yeah, sun filters. Mm. Usually, if you can't afford to film at night, there's probably something wrong with your studio. Or, or at least indoors. Yeah, well, yeah, indoor yeah, studios? Yeah. Indoors, yeah. Are cheaper. Mm, yeah, but they, they just didn't go for this one. Uh, number three is, um, yeah, Wizards with Machine Guns. You know what? Um, I would have to say that's probably a good thing. Hey, come on now. Did you see Potter Puppet Pals? You didn't? Wait, what? Watch it. Potter <laughs> Puppet Pals? Potter Puppet Pals is the best thing to come out of Harry Potter. Oh, no, they killed that. Voldemort with machine guns. Okay, well, that's, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, now, now again, and it's weird. You see the movie. That was a comedy. That was you a comedy. realize I'm not talking about real wizards or any well, not real wizards, but I'm not talking about the the traditional sense of wizards. But still, it's pretty funny. Um, number five, we got um, 
Now this is funny too because there's this warrior like princess who like half the time decides to be a warrior yeah. and half the time yeah. she's yeah. not a no, kind of, but not really. Um, but at one point, she pulls out a blade and she puts it to somebody's neck. And maybe if you're not such a big fan of Lord of the Rings like I am, you wouldn't notice this. But it was a Sting replica, and that is Bilbo's sword slash Frodo's sword. It was it, it was a replica. There was the same engravings on it. It was the same length. I, I mean, if you had seen Lord of the Rings movies, you knew this was... They, they couldn't even afford to make like their own fake sword. Or at least, you know... <sighs> They use a Sting replica. That's all I gotta say. This is gonna That's be an all. interesting one because I'm gonna have to disagree with that being a problem again. Because, come on now, that that sounds like just a cool Easter egg for for the nerdy people like you. No, that get they that did not mean it as an Easter egg. They did not mean that as an Easter egg. Not I at all. Either way, either they did it because they couldn't afford to make their own weapons, or it was a cool Easter egg to throw in there. Like, hey man, we we had Sting with a person. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't enjoy it. I I saw right through your ruse, Dragonfire and Phase Four films, trying to make me think she had a cool sword. No, it's a did it glow blue. No, it, it blue? didn't. Oh. It didn't glow blue. Okay, that that ruins it. Okay, that would have been the Easter egg though, if it had, because there's orcs in this movie. So if it had glowed blue when the orcs get around, that would have been like, hey, we're paying homage to to Lord of the Rings. No, they just stole the replica. They they were like, hey, uh, let's go raid Warner Brothers uh, prop department. Because you probably would notice a lot of other props in this. Like, all the orcs look the same. But, um, uh, number six, uh, the movie really should have ended at the 15-minute mark because something happens at that point. <laughs> something happens at that point, and you're like, well, okay, now it's ridiculous just to continue the movie on because it obviously, if anybody had any sense at all, if you put a person in this position, there's no way out of it. So... Stupidity led to the movie continuing on. That's all I gotta say. Mm. Fifteen minute mark. And number seven is uh, the re oh yeah, this was my favorite thing because there's this, supposed to be this tunnel that takes you from one world into the next, and you can tell that all they're doing is shooting it from the right when they walk in, and then shooting it from the left when they walk out. Like it's the same rocks, the same bushes, same everything on each side. It's like really. Really, like you couldn't just shoot it from like behind, so you can't see the front of it, or or just like, uh, or put some fake plants in there just to make it look like a different entrance. But no, it's the same place they walk in that they walk out, and they do that a lot of times with a lot of different areas. It's like you see them walk the the main character walking through like this, like not deserty, but like kind of bushy area, and then you see him again later, and he's supposed to be thousands of miles away, walking through the exact same area, and it's just like, come on. Come on. Mm. At least move something around. Change change more angles than just, oh, we're shooting it from the left. Oh, we're shooting it from the right. So, that yeah. sounds like really... Uh, I, I, I gotta say, that one sounds pretty lazy. Like, they could have also just shot the different, like, switched up where they're doing scenes, couldn't they? They just... Because mm -hmm. you obviously have different scenes all over the place. Just say, okay, this is going to be here. Now let's swap what we're filming right now to yeah. be here. Like, that sounds like they, they wanted to just go in order or something. Like, well, we're already here. Let's, let's film the next part. <laughs> we don't need to move the cameras. It's cool, guys. Let's just, let's just pretend like you're coming out the other way. Yeah. So, and if you can count out there, which I don't know if everybody can, I can't count that well. Um, you know that I said I just did seven, but I really have only done six. And so you might be wondering which one I skipped over, and that was number four. And that was because I did that by accident and I just caught myself. But number four is that they spell fire wrong in the title. It's dragon fire F-Y-R-E instead of F-I-R-E. And there's really just no point for them to spell it. And they don't explain that there's something different about what they're talking about? Nope. And by they the way, there's dragon cool. in it for literally uh, maybe five minutes. Five minutes of dragon time. And it's their, the name of the title. So, yeah. Well, that is our horrible movie of the week, and this movie gets a whopping half Chewbacca chainsaw out of five. What? That's like the lowest we've ever got, man. No, I've given somebody zero. Okay. I can't remember. I think it was Cybergeddon I might have given zero. I, I don't remember. I gave, a, I gave a zero out there. This one. That's it. You don't even get the chainsaw part. Everybody else gets the chainsaw part, but not you. Not you.
I guess that might be better for you to not get a chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, but it, it's their only... They're not even getting the chainsaw. It's like Chewbacca's like, eh, you're not even worth me chainsawing you in half. And it's just, just a flick of his <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, eh, get, be gone. I don't even want to waste my time. But yeah, so... That's, that's the horrible movie of the week. So don't watch that movie. Don't do it. But let's talk about a movie that you might want to watch. I know I'm going to be watching it. I know Brendan's going to be watching it. Well, yeah, Brendan will watch it. He'll just take a long time to watch it because he never watches anything new. That's right. I, I really don't. <laughs> so, hey, we're not lying about it. But, uh, yeah, and that's the Deadpool movie. It just was recently confirmed by Fox that they are in production. Uh, it, it is slated for a 2016 release date, so not too far away. Uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to kind of butt heads. I believe um, X-Men Apocalypse is coming out sometime that year, like the May, June, July slot. So we might see a Deadpool movie hopefully like February, a little bit earlier, or maybe later in August, but you know, they haven't given us an exact month. But we do have some confirmations. Tim Miller will be the director. Uh, really, I saw three movies that he had directed so far, and none of them looked that great. I don't even remember what they are, so... That'll tell you something. But Ryan Reynolds is going to be reprised in his role as Deadpool, uh, and the only other time he did it was in the Wolverine Origins movie, which was a horrible movie, but um, he did good in that role. He was fine. I mean, honestly, he didn't have to... He was... It was a weird role to really judge an actor by, because... It was two minutes long. being himself was Mm -hmm. a fairly short amount of it, and then he did have the big stuff at the end, but it was just it was just action, and you couldn't really get a lot of uh, acting out of him in that state. So, yeah, and they ruined Deadpool know. in that movie, by the way. They just ruined him, mm. simply ruined him. But uh, but yeah, so he'll be back. But if you did, if you were able to check out that test footage that leaked around Comic Con, which was amazing, it was CGI, and it was kind of like this is the direction we're planning on going. Ryan Reynolds did the did do the Deadpool voice for the CGI. And it, it, had was, it was CGI, but you barely noticed. Like, that was the level of oh, well-done CGI it was. Yeah, now, I don't think this movie is going to be CGI. I think it is going to be live action. But if they did it CGI, and they did it as well as they did the test footage, I would not complain. I think it would be awesome CGI. Actually, I'm almost looking forward to a CGI movie, but it won't hurt. It, it won't be bad if they do live action. Mm. But, so if you saw that, you saw that he was really... The, uh, I mean, just his wittiness, his quirkiness, really kind of fits what we we all know from the comics. You know, the merc with the mouth. So this is really, it's heading in the right direction. Everything is kind of lining up to be what we want it to be. And and, and at least in the previews, it looked like they weren't going to try to water things down at all, really, or at least not not much, which is a little bit of a fear. And still, with the movie coming out, they they might because I know. Uh, everyone really likes to hit that PG-13 uh, slot, but really Deadpool probably should should get that R to really bring out um, all the deadpool Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's funny that you mention it. Um, there was actually a recent interview with uh, Tim Miller, the director, and he said they are probably going to aim for PG-13. Yeah, I know, that's what they always aim for because that's uh, it's a better business slot apparently, especially for uh, big action movies like that. Um, well, Anthony, yeah, you can you can push it a little bit more. PG thirteens nowadays, I'd say, are a little bit more risque, if that's the proper term, than they used to be. But it's not quite where I would want it to be. I know in a PG thirteen, you can drop one f bomb and that's it. Any more f bombs than that, and it's rated R. And in the test footage, they did drop an f bomb. So <laughs> you know, it, it was. I, I've seen certain movies get around that in funny ways. Like there was one movie that I was surprised they draw up like two or three, but they only the guy says it once, and then every other time is a recording of him saying it. Ah. Of, because they recorded a, they like review the tape of a previous scene or something like that. So it's like, oh well, he only really said it was right. <laughs> yeah, and I could see them going ahead and recording all the cursing, all the big stuff, you know, all the the blood and guts, and then figuring out a way to kind of, you know, because they also movies they dis- they distinguish between if you chop off somebody's head and show them chopping it off, or like let's say you hold up a head, if there's blood dripping from the head then that makes it more rated R, but if you have just a bloodless head, it's not quite rated R, <laughs> you know, it's how much blood is sprayed, and you know, how much so, like, 
look at the Dark Knight movie. That movie was very, very dark. I mean, that could have been rated R. Joker pushes a guy's head onto a pencil at one point, and it. But the way they cut it, you didn't quite see everything. They implied it. You knew what went on, but you didn't quite see it. So they might try to take that turn with Deadpool. Uh, they maybe, might, but but Deadpool is not. Implied. Like Dark Knight had the ability to do that because you could still get the grittiness. You could still do kind of the old style filmmaking and not show everything, but um, but you get the grittiness and the seriousness in that. But Deadpool is just such so comical mm-hmm. that you know some of his comedy, like in that preview, was playing with dead things and being gruesome rather explicitly. <laughs> It's true. and But I, I, in the I, comics, like if you look at the comics, yeah, he drops a lot of curse words. Most of the time in the comics, they kind of put, you know, like the at hashtag weird si- symbols there that represent the curse words. You know what curse words he's saying, but they they don't necessarily print them. So they could almost go the same way. I mean, what would you? how would you feel about them like bleeping out different curse words? They would have to do it just right, which maybe Deadpool could do with the whole, you know, his, his like super awareness. The only way I would accept it is if they actually did something like not bleeped, but showed um, those like hashtag whatever stuff every time he talked. <laughs> yeah, that might be it, cool. Like, did one yeah. of the kind of kind of in a similar style as the old Batman uh, show. He would be like, bam, wowsy butted with curse words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, that might be pretty cool. I mean, there are ways, I guess, I around <laughs> some of the censors to still target it at a PG-13 audience and still get it out as a PG-13 without sacrificing a lot. But if they do it that way, they better release a DVD version with everything in it. That's all I'm saying. Uh, yeah, um... I'm just not confident, but but we'll see. We'll see. They'd have to do it really well. They well, I guess we'll see how they do. But yeah, I, I don't like that they're trying for PG-13. But like I said, I know why they are, and I expect them to. Well, I mean, I just, it, it makes sense. They want to make a successful movie. If you don't make one, if it's not successful, nobody sees it. Then what's the point of making movies? Yeah, there's the artistic point part, but. I don't think Deadpool is really an artistic movie. <laughs> you know, it's a, just a fun movie that I want to see. Mm-hmm. And and again, there's plenty of PG-13 movies out there that I've really enjoyed, so I guess in I synopsis, know, we're hoping for the rated R, gonna be but cutting, expecting this, a PG-13. This seems like one that they're going to have to to really hold back yeah. hold back a lot for to, to make it PG-13. So. Yeah. so hoping for a rated R, but expecting a PG-13. Mm-hmm. Kind of how I think we're seeing it. So I don't know. Let us know what you think. Is there any ways around some of these things to still showcase all of Deadpool and his comical, gory, bloody fighting, cursing, uh, just potty mouthness, or should they just you know is that gonna? Oh, I don't know. How would that even hold the movie back? I don't think they could. They they should just go rated R. Let me know in comments down below that you want it rated R too. Let's take a vote. Maybe if we can get 70,000 votes or what is it, 75,000 petitions, President Obama will have to comment on it. Let's go to WhiteHouse.gov. <laughs> That's what we should do. Be like President Obama, we want you to endorse a rated R movie. That would be that would be really weird. That would that would probably he probably wouldn't want to jump into that storm. That would be. A, a, it, let's we have to see it happen now. We we just yeah. have to like it's everyone. Happen. Get... Come on, guys, we're starting it up right now. We're gonna start a petition. Seventy-five thousand votes, and then we have and then we make Obama talk about it. I think that would just be the funniest thing of of all time. So yeah, let us know what you think. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at words my face on Twitter, words my face at gmail.com, Google Plus, and Facebook. All good ways of getting a hold of us. And so let's move on to um something that I've been looking forward to forever. And that is Gotham the series. Since this was announced, I have been just salivating, waiting for this to come out. Because what they're doing is they're kind of taking the Christopher Nolan look and putting it into a TV show as like an origin story. And I got to say, I watched the first episode tonight, and it did not disappoint. This show was amazing. I, I just loved it from beginning to end. They gave you enough Easter eggs, enough winks at you know the, the hardcore Batman fans. Uh, but also kind of walked you into the characters. If you never saw a Batman before in your life, you're still going to enjoy the show. Not because, you know, it's necessarily, oh, I know that guy, but it's because it's just, it was well-written, lots of drama, you know, and it, it gives this really 
dark and gritty v- feel for Gotham. That, again, Christopher Nolan's been bringing... Uh, Frank Miller, really, the inspiration for all that, but that we've been seeing recently in the Batman universe, which, hey, if you watch the show, you know we love that. Absolutely. Um I mean, at this point, I think that it's kind of been uh, the Batman image has been changed to the point that he's got to be the dark. The well, they call him the Dark Knight anyway, but he's got to be the dark superhero, the good guy superhero, not dark in the sense of oh he sometimes walks on the evil side or something like that, but just he's dealing with the gritty underworld. Mm-hmm. He's not using superpowers anyway, but he has to use his mind. So it's it's delving into his own personal demons, it's delving into everyone else's demons, all this kinds of, like, this is not the, the, the sunny, perfect city that he's even defending and all these yeah. things. Yeah, that's true. And and the other thing is, he doesn't have an ambiguous moral code. That's the thing about Batman, is you know exactly how he feels and what he feels is right and what he feels is wrong. He doesn't use guns because he doesn't believe in killing people. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't do certain things that he could do to make his life easier, especially since he doesn't have superpowers because of, you know, and this is uh, because of his moral code. I mean, that's one of the things about Batman that he's unwavering. Uh, You've seen different superheroes that have wavered, you know, in different situations. And his moral code is not necessarily uh, aligned with legal systems. Like, Mm -hmm. he does often help out and everything when he thinks it's uh, appropriate, but, I mean, that was one of the things about the the Dark Knight um, Returns series, though, is, you know, he... He has conflicts with Batman because he sees Batman as a pawn who's just following along, following orders, and not really upholding good, instead aligning with the the status quo and order more so than doing what's right. Um, and and we see, you know, Batman, he'll, he'll do things that are not, that maybe it's the police can't do, maybe it's not the, the same stuff, but he, he would go after cops if he saw cops oh, doing yeah. things wrong. Oh, yeah. And so so let's talk about the show. So the show does start off with, of course, I mean, everybody knows where it's going to start off. Bruce Wayne's parents die. Uh, now, I do got to say this about Catwoman. They kind of show her jumping around. She didn't have any speaking parts, but she did. She was kind of hovering around some of the main elements of the story. And this this girl, I think she's like 15, 14 or 15. She's got like a 30-year-old woman's face, but like, uh, like a 12-year-old girl she, in a 12-year-old girl's body, which is just... It's just kind of weird to look at her. It's like, wait, how old are you again? Like, you That's weird. It, you just look too old for how old you really are. It just, I don't know. It kind of freaked me out a little bit, just to be honest with you. Just a little bit. This is Catwoman we're talking about? Yeah, Catwoman. She's a, she's okay. a young girl in this. And, and she's got nine lines. Maybe she's on her second. Uh, maybe. And, I don't and her know. face stayed the same. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she died when she was 30 in her first life, and the only thing that stayed the same was her face. She's like Benjamin Button, but Catwoman. It's but not yeah, like so Benjamin Button at all, actually. Benjamin backwards and retaining an aspect same, of your, your same previous same life. Thing. Same thing. Nothing like. <laughs> same thing, same thing. But I can tell she's going to be an interesting character because she does, they have her set it up as her witnessing the Wayne's death. So, and she kind of pops in and checks on Bruce a little bit, it seems like. Uh, now, Bruce is not the main element of this show. It's going to center around Ben Gordon and Harvey Bullock. And if you don't know who Harvey Bullock is, I know you've watched the Batman animated series, the 90s cartoon. Great cartoon. He was the fat cop who was always kind of... The detective, not a good guy. fat fat detective that was, he, he never liked Batman. Not a good guy necessarily. Not a bad guy necessarily, but definitely not a good guy. Um, yeah, and I mean, so, well, he was, he, he was he was a little bit of a slimy detective. He also just wasn't very good at his job. Like you you got the sense mm-hmm. that he he could do it. He wasn't a completely bumbling idiot. But he obviously wasn't Batman level good at detective work. Well, nobody's Batman level good. I mean, that's not fair. But like nowhere near, and you know, maybe he <laughs> resented him a little bit because of that. Like I'm yeah. the detective here, but that's true. And so it's Jim Gordon is. Um, did I say Ben Gordon earlier? I meant Jim Gordon. Jim Gordon is new on the force. This is like he's just a brand newbie. So he's partnered up with Harvey Bullock, who's been on the force. He's a grizzled veteran. And they pretty much are, are painting a picture of a city that just everything is kind of almost rotten to the core. The police, uh, there's this one scene where a cop is held hostage by uh, by a criminal in the police station, actually, who has his gun to his head, and, and Gordon comes up, and he he's 
finds a way out of the situation by he disarms them and everything like that. And then all the police in the police, star sh- police station start beating this guy, this prisoner, <laughs> like just ruthlessly beating him. And he steps in to kind of stop him. And his partner goes, what are you doing? Why didn't you just kill the guy? When he pulls a gun, you kill him. And it's like, wow, you know. So they have this different view of how to police crime. It's that, like that may, okay. that may also be kind of one of those social satire things they're they're throwing in there too. But I think they're just trying to kind of tell you about the police department. I mean, because they the police they don't want crime as long as the crime is behind you know the scenes. As long as the average person doesn't see it, they don't seem to care about it. Mm. Uh, because they also set up a character, Fish Mooney, played by Jada Pickett Smith, who does an awesome job in this so far. I really like this character, at least the way they've developed her so far. Um, she's kind of an underling in the Falcone family who might be making a play for the top, which we'll probably see later on this season. But it's a, it's an interesting dynamic there. Um, but they show Harvey's like really good friends with her. <laughs> you know, like he walks in and gives her a kiss and everything like that. And, you know, they kind of work together to do some pretty bad things. Uh, but then you also have, they've set up characters, the Riddler pops up for like eh, maybe about two minutes, and it just so happens he's working in the police station as a forensic uh, analyst. Analyst? Was, analyst. Analy- analyst. There you go, analyst. Ha <laughs> ha! That's why I got you here, Brendan. <laughs> yeah, so you can speak. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, he, he does some, uh, he comes in and he's giving them like all these riddles and stuff like that when he's telling them about stuff, and you see this one little part, he says a riddle and Gordon figures it out right away and he kind of looks at Gordon like, uh-oh, I'm going to have trouble with this guy later on. You know, So you can kind of tell he's rotten. Uh, now they do bring Penguin in. Penguin's going to be probably the biggest uh, villain, main Superman villain, Superman, gosh, Batman villain um, that we'll see in this series because Penguin, they really set him up. They give him uh, a pretty good foundation and there's something that happens in, in the show with Penguin where it's like, oh, Penguin could have never been around if something else happened. But I won't get I'm, This is a spoiler-free review. So Penguin does something pretty cool in there. Well, not he doesn't do something cool, but he is setting up to be a cool character. And they even kind of explain where he got his nickname Penguin from because he's not this Danny DeVito, like, little short, deformed guy. He is actually a tall guy, but he walks kind of funny. So that's 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 that. But, um, yeah, and they also um, bring in Barbara... And I know her as Barbara Gordon, Jim Gordon's daughter, who then becomes Batwoman later. But like, Isn't this she is supposed to be younger, like a lot younger. Yeah, but Barbara is Jim Gordon's fiance. Now it's not; she's not called Barbara Gordon yet, of course. But they give Barbara that role, which I just thought that was interesting. That's the first real character that they've kind of flipped and changed around the way they're doing it. So maybe yeah. just so they could put her in, because like I said, she's supposed to be a lot younger. Um, otherwise, right? So, uh, how are you gonna fit her into this time frame um, before she was born? Unless I don't know, it may maybe Barbara Gordon. Maybe they named the daughter Barbara after the mother. I, that's kind of I, I don't I, remember don't that. that very often. Yeah, and and who knows how it's gonna develop? I mean, maybe this is just they named her Barbara and didn't think, hey, Jim Gordon's supposed to have a daughter named Barbara. Maybe they just I mean, didn't I don't think that. anything about Gordon's wife. So. I just don't remember anything. And again, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. And then we have uh, Poison Ivy was actually introduced real quick, too. They just called her Ivy, but she was tending plants, so you know what she was doing. She was a little girl, too. So, And then Bruce Wayne, they do show him a little bit more towards the end of the episode, and they kind of, okay, he's going to develop into Batman. See, the only thing I'm disappointed from that is the introduction of Poison Ivy, of Ivy, because otherwise it sounded like you had plenty room set up to make a reproduction of the original Adam West Batman movie. They had all the right villains. Joker. Oh, Ivy was in that. Joker. uh, There was no Joker. I didn't say Joker. He'll be there. He'll be there. And they actually might have dropped something. If you watch the show, if you watch the show, there's there's a part in Fish Mooney's Club, which if you watch the show, you'll know what I'm talking about. I don't want to spoil it for anybody else, but drop me some comments down below. Tell me if you think that's Joker. I'm kind of curious. They might have... Shown Joker, but not really at all. But kind of maybe, you possibly. You know he has to come in sometime. Like they might wait till second season. Whatever, I don't care. They're gonna show Joker. But that's Batman. the thing about Joker is Joker kind of pops up when Batman pops up, and it's almost a response to Batman coming. Is Joker comes in? 
And no, I think that's how Batman. They had uh, Joker origin stories before, though. No, uh, that's the thing about Joker. Nobody knows where he came from. No, it's not. No, that's not the case. There, there are origin stories for him that have been written wow. where he falls into a vat of like weird chemical stuff, and well, that's that, what. That was the up. Tim Burton. That was the original Tim Burton Batman. Which yeah, well, there, is all right. It has it. Yeah, exists. you're right. Okay, fine. It exists in the comics. I believe he does not have an origin story. Nobody well, knows. We'll find out. out. Anyone that knows, comment down yeah, below. Yes. Yeah. Comment down below. But I mean, I, just, if you watch the show, whatever. Give me I don't care. I want Joker, Penguin, Catwoman. And uh, and the Riddler to team up and set up a bomb. Yeah. All right. And After a shark, a at a shark at at Batman while he's flying over the ocean, over the sea. Over the sea. Yes. Yes. yes over the sea. But I don't know. Let if you watch the show, let me know what you thought. Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at words for my face on Twitter. Words my face at gmail.com. Facebook and Google Plus always good ways to get a hold of us. I'm curious to, if everybody else loved the show as much as I did, because there was so much hype going into the show. And again, I'm one of the people who was hyping the show, and it did not disappoint. It's a rarity in this world nowadays. And usually, I build it up too much, and then it can never reach those expectations. And it did. It really did. So, I was blown away. I guess, did they hit the crucial part that you were expecting the most and wanting, desiring? Yeah, they, they, they got the feel of Gotham that I was looking for. They, I meant they just killed his parents. Well, That's I what mean, you were really looking forward to, wasn't it? I wasn't really looking forward to that. But, <laughs> was that yeah, the twist so, ending? Was that the yeah, twist no, ending? Like the no I was like, oh no, his parents died? What? How could you do that? Nobody ever expected Bruce Wayne's parents to die. Yeah, so. But yeah. Um, but yeah, um, real quick, we went way over on Gotham, but you watched the show today. Uh, I'd like to he hear what you think. I about. did. There was another premiere today, right after Gotham, on a different station, called Scorpion. This, oh. is, not as, this is not as dark as Gotham. However, it was actually a really good show. Uh, I, I I would recommend it. It's about a bunch of geniuses that are pulled that they already kind of work together, um, but they're pulled in by the like defense department or no homeland security um, in the first episode to help recover like 54 planes or 56 planes that are flying over LAX that don't have a. a, a no longer have communication capabilities, so they can't land, and if they don't land, they're eventually going to run out of stuff, right? Uh, so these geniuses have to figure out how to fix everything real quick. And they have geniuses of all kinds of... I don't know who the, what the main guy character stuff is like, why, what his exact ability is, but he seems to be just an overall genius. He's like a George um, Washington can pull all the people together. Yeah, but he but he's also like a smart guy. Like he writes the software. He thinks of a bunch of plans all the time. He 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 uh, comments at one point. Someone says like, "Oh, so you think you're like Einstein, right?" He's like, "Einstein had an IQ of 182. I had a, I have an IQ of 197." Like, By the so, way, IQ tests don't really mean a thing. Yeah. Just I'm just gonna. Put um, that but there's the, so there's him. There's a super mathematical guy. There's uh the, this woman that's great like with electronics and just that kind of hard tech stuff. Uh, and there's a psychologist guy in there, which was kind of interesting because it seemed like it was mostly science-y engineering stuff, but no, they mm -hmm. psychologist guy, super genius. And a kid, because, you know, you got to throw a kid in there. you got to throw a kid in there. you got to have the obligatory kid. <laughs> yeah, but it made a little bit more sense because they explained that the uh, the main guy started in this way of, his way of uh, life and dealing with this kind of stuff. As a as a kid, he was picked up as a as a kid by um, the Homeland Security guy, who uh, ends up bringing them back in. Who there's a little tension there because of the way that they used him previously, um, but there's a lot of you know tense uh, suspense there. There's a few cliche moments, um, but it's handled fairly well, um, and it's cool to see them figure out like. You know, uh, many different ways to solve a problem and uh, come down to the wire and struggle, and they they go over a little bit of the the downfall of a lot of geniuses. Rather than just these guys are geniuses, they all each have a flaw that's particular to a genius. Like they they have social problems. One guy is super OCD. He can't even work on saving all these people's lives at imminent. Uh, in imminent danger, without organizing some chalk, you know mm. things like that. So it's uh, kind of a lighthearted, like yeah, 
like crime beater, you know, it's come up. It's kind of like a Sherlock, like, but you have a bunch of them together, and they come go about solving problems in a unique Sherlock type way. Yeah, and but they but they do show like they they do have these dark sides. It is sometimes very detrimental to them. Um, not just that they live with it, because they, they actually have trouble living with these problems and getting jobs done, but they, they pull together and they are able to do it, and they get some outside help pressure that uh, that helps them uh, kind of balance out and just deal with these problems um, to, to help save people. So. so so you're giving that your your endorsement there, huh? I do, and you know, if it keeps up this way, that means you're going to, you, you might need to, to reserve a little extra time because you can go, you can watch Gotham at 8, you can watch Scorpion at 9. So. Well, there you go. There you go. But uh, I have football also, so I don't know. But yeah, so hit us up. If you watch Scorpion, what do you think? If you watch both of them, uh, what do you think? Which one was better? Uh, of course, Gotham. It's cool. That's the one I watched. It's cool. It's cool. I think but, it's uh, going to depend on what you were looking for because Scorpion does have some, some tense moments and everything, but it's definitely not as uh, imminently dark of a, of a feeling. It's, it, gotcha. there, it's suspenseful and things like but that, happier. but it's not as... Um, it has a happy ending, annoying. whereas Gotham doesn't look like it's going to have a happy ending for a long time. But exactly. hit us up. Let us know what you thought. Uh, comments down below, of course, at What's My Face on Twitter, What's My Face at gmail.com, and Google Plus and Facebook. All good ways to get a hold of us. So that takes us through the TV section, and we are going way over tonight. But uh, <laughs> that'll bring us to one of my favorite segments of the night. And I always intro it like this, because I look down and I see Brendan's not really looking down. I'm like, come on, Brendan, look down. You need to start getting ready. And that is Quick Hits. And he was ready. What are you doing? There we go. Uh, remix. Uh, uh, uh. Really, really close up to the camera. <laughs> so, so let's start it out with the first Quick Hit of the Night. And that is IDW, the comic uh, group, um, is starting a new G.I. Joe comic called The Fall of G.I. Joe where Cobra takes over the world's security from G.I. Joe's. That's something I never thought I'd hear. Mm -mm. But all right. That's, that's, well, that's kind of like what the last G.I. Joe movie did. That was kind of the plot of that, but yeah, stupid. So. Uh, but apparently I didn't even realize they wouldn't watch the last G.I. Joe movie. Yeah, I did. That was going to be a horrible movie of the week, but I don't know. I think I didn't watch it all, so didn't count. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, so, I mean, and apparently the G.I. Joe comics have been awesome the past 10 years, especially from IDW, um, so... Uh, Check it out if you're a comic fan. Uh, but let's move it on to the next quick hit. And that is Lords of the Fallen. This is a pretty cool, I kind of say it's like a Skyrim type game. Um, it's coming out for Xbox One and PS4. And it's going to run on 1080p on PS4 and only 900p on Xbox One. That's a weird resolution. Yeah. Like usually it's either 720 or 1080. Yeah. 900. I just I just thought that was that was the first time I'd ever heard that. That's why I made it on the quick hit. So <laughs> you know, I just thought. Like I said, I'm gonna like be they were struggling. Them. They were struggling. They're like, uh, what are we gonna do? Um, mm -hmm. Well, we can't do 1080. Let's let's get nine. Let's get something above well, 720 so we can save was, from that. Yeah, what I was reading from the developers is just like we couldn't we could get it, but it would take way too much time, and we don't want to devote that much time just trying to up the resolution. So yeah, you're you getting that, 900. You know what that and, sounds to me like. That sounds to me like they looked at the sales for the Xbox One versus the PS4, and they're like, not worth it. Mm. Plus, I mean, how much of a difference is really 900 and 1080? I don't think it's much of a difference, but we'll find out. It, yeah, I don't know. De depends on how big of a screen you have, I'm guessing. I guess, so. yeah. If I have an 80-inch screen, I'll probably tell a lot more than if I have a 32-inch screen. Exactly. So, But let's move it on to the next quick hit. And this is awesome news, awesome, awesome news. This would make a topic for most nights if we weren't talking about Deadpool, and that is Brian Singer has been confirmed as the director for X-Men Apocalypse. And if you've seen any of Brian Singer's movies, usually the first two X-Men movies, uh, he just does the best X-Men movies. And so if he's not attached, I'm usually kind of leery. But he did Days of Future Past. I believe he executive produced and picked the director for First Class. So this is this is a good sign for Apocalypse. Well, definitely the first two X Men movies and Days of Future Past were were solid movies. And it sounds like and, and three was bad. Um, and the, uh, First Class was all right. So so it definitely oh, sounds like if he's direct, he needs to direct these movies. Like yeah. that's, he's that's he's he should be him and uh, and X Men is just. 
you shouldn't separate them. And, and, and they need to get Nightcrawler back. If you they haven't seen The Usual Suspects, back. watch that. Oh, he was the director of Usual Suspects. Wow. Yeah, okay, he's just amazing. Yeah, All right. yeah he's, he's amazing. Bad Hat Harry. Whenever you see Bad Hat Harry, it means Brian Singer had his hand in it. Uh, so that's a good sign. Let's Still, move it on. To- we need oh. Nightcrawler back. I'm going to say that over and over. Get Nightcrawler back. He was a feature in X-Men 2, so Brian Singer... We're looking at you, buddy. That's the second WhiteHouse.gov uh, petition we're going to do. We want Nightcrawler back in the X-Men movies. So we were going to do Make Deadpool Rated R, and we want Nightcrawler back. Sounds good. Okay. And so let's move it on to the next quick kid. And um, California has just allowed Google to use their self-driving car on public roads. Cool. Uh, I know there was something about... Out. Yeah, I remember there was one law recently that was about uh, making sure that it had a manual override or something, but I guess they, they, they dealt with that. Yeah, we're taking a step towards the future. I just can't wait to see this. It's going to be cool. And let's move it on to the last quick hit. And that is Maze Runner came in number one in the box office this weekend with $32.5 million, followed up by Liam Neeson's A Walk Amongst the Tombstones. Among the tombstones, I put an ST on there for some reason, uh, with 13.1, and this is where I leave you with 11.9. Uh, it looks like we still have Guardians at six with 5.2, so they're still in the top ten. They've been doing it for a long time. Yep. But yeah, so that is the quick hits of the night. <laughs> All right, and so let's take that and roll it into our last subject, and that'll be our video games. And that is because Tokyo Game Show just came up and just went. And now a lot of these trailers that I saw looked really cool. did not understand a word they were saying because they were all in Japanese. But I'm just going to tell you about some of the coolest games that uh, we saw coming out. And let's start off with the, the big game that they announced and they showed some trailer and some demo of, but then really ended up not showing you anything. And that's Final Fantasy XV. This is a game that's been in development for the past eight years. Uh, it was originally going to be Final Fantasy XIII Versus and they've changed it since. Now, you have been going through some changes. Uh, the lead designer left Square, pulled him off of that, and they put him on Kingdom Hearts 3, so I would say good good sign for Kingdom Hearts fans. And they brought in the guy who did Type-0, which is a new Final Fantasy game that's going to be coming out pretty soon, um, and brought him in to finish up the game. So it, it, it's interesting. Now, we were all promised a really dark, the darkest Final Fantasy yet, you know, and it doesn't look like that. It kind of looks like a buddy road trip, uh, with dinosaurs mixed in there. But the combat system looked awesome. It's kind of combining Tales, the Tales game combat system with Final Fantasy XII, which was one of my favorite Final Fantasies, whether people hate on it or not. I love that game. So I got a lot of high hopes for that. Yeah, the, I'm a little bit leery about it having so long of a development because yeah, I guess it just gets riskier with the longer development. It could either be an amazing hit because um, you know, Final Fantasy VII was in development for five plus years, um, and the others I don't think were that long. I don't know, maybe one or two of them were. Um, but at the same time, you never want to risk that Duke Nukem Forever effect. Of yeah. You're just in development too long. too long. And if they're at 55% now after eight years, they're starting to look at that Duke Nukem Forever time frame. Well, I think what they're saying is they're going to start... The reason they brought it out to the show is because they're going to start pushing more to it because they had pulled a lot off of it. It was kind of like a back burner project for a while. They That's why they called it 13 Verses. Yeah. And and it seems like they're done with Final Fantasy fourteen. They're done with the whole... Why the hell they did a trilogy of Final Fantasy XIII, I'll never know. But they're done with the whole revamping Final Fantasy XIV era MMO. So it seems like they're going to take their forces and really put it into this. So... I'm a big Final Fantasy fan. I play all the games except for the MMOs, but that's not because I think MMOs are bad. It's just not my thing. Yeah. But and the thing um, also though is like they they really need to push into it because they've been teasing people about it also for the last several years. Like they keep like, like oh, hey, look, we the thing. Yeah. Hey, let's show you a demo. Hey, look, doesn't this look awesome? You're not gonna get to play it though. It's like jerks. Why? <laughs> you know? But yeah, so uh, another game that ca- uh, was announced was the new Tales of game, and I said, I was just talking about that. This is a series of RPGs that I- I've come to really, really enjoy, uh, starting with Tales of Vesperia, Tales of Zillia 1 and 2 are both really good games, and this new one's called Tales of Zestaria. Mm-hmm. 
So you know the Symphonia games were also really cool, and I think that they got um, they didn't Symphonia, get as much. Yeah. yeah, I think that they they didn't get as much attention as they could have in the in the West anyway, in the U.S. for instance, because the graphic style and the art style looked a little bit like kitty a little bit. It's like cel shaded the, cartoon, but I like it. Yeah, 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 but that's just not what um, appeals usually to the the bigger RPG fans in the U.S. Like plenty plenty of people played it. Don't get me wrong. Plenty of people did. I think could add a little bit more. Yeah, I think it took a little bit to, to catch on and the kind of had more of an of anime time. feel to it. I would mm-hmm. say. Yeah. Um, whereas Final Fantasy like 15, if you saw the trailer for that, that thing looked amazing. I mean, just gorgeous. Some of the best graphics I've ever seen. It's like movie graphics, but you're playing through it. So I mean, there are differences. But hey, just because the presentation style is different doesn't make the game any less or, or more good. I, I just think you should give it a shot if you haven't tried them. And pick it up with Tales of Zillia, that's a good place to pick up. Or if you want to go back and get Vesperia, go for it. But uh, I, Yeah, I think that they've started releasing a few uh, packs of those games too on like PSN and such of, of whatever group of those games. I've seen somewhere anyway, like one and two of Tales of This or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that was a good time to get into it. Um because they keep they keep churning out really good games, and you can get some of the older ones pretty at a pretty, pretty good rate bundle. Yeah, and you can sink fifty hours into these games. They have side quests and everything. So if you want to get a game that'll occupy your time and give you good value, you can go pick up one of those games on the cheap and really have a good time. So check them out. Um, another big thing out of there was uh, New Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, the Phantom Pain trailer came out, and this one had showed the. The, the sniper slash assassin quiet, which had garnered a little bit of controversy because uh, Kojima, I believe, said he changed the way she looked and wanted to make her more erotic looking. <laughs> um, which yeah, you have to have that to balance out the super 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 old Solid Snake. No, he's not that old. This is back in the eighties. He should be. Oh wait 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 wait. Are you telling me he's not in a wheelchair now? With no, an old man blanket. No, this is this actually predates um, the first Meta Gear Solid. No, 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 no. We, we, don't, we don't go back in time when we go forward in numbers. Well, like like Metal Gear Solid Three me. was back in the late sixties, early seventies. Uh, if you played Peace Walker, probably my favorite game of the Metal Gear Solid series. Peace Walker was amazing. That was like in the seventies, and um, this kind of. Looks like they're picking up where he left off. He's got his mercenary group, Outer Heaven, um, and they're kind of the army without a country. And, uh, yeah, they show off Quiet, who's an assassin, who does this weird, like, teleportation slash can change her looks weird thing. And she's pretty much in a bikini the whole time. But they kind of try to explain it away, saying that her powers she gets, she gets them, like, through photosynthesis. Photo- photosynthesis? All right, thank you for saying the big word. <laughs> um, from the sun, so, you know, they, they're kind of saying that that's why she's a little more scantily clad, but, eh, you know, it looks cool. The graphics look awesome. Of course, again, the chap- the trailer was in Japanese, so I understood absolutely nothing of what was going on. I just saw her kind of jump out of a helicopter and, like, disappear here and then reappear here and then disappear here, and then Snake kind of comes out and puts his hand on her shoulder, and, like, she walks off. So, <laughs> you know, it was an interesting trailer. They also had a, a big demo, like, 20 minutes of gameplay, but uh, it looks awesome. I mean, just that's going to be a pretty cool game. Um, and then the last thing I really wanted to talk about from the Tokyo Game Show was Project Morpheus. They really started showing that off a lot more. A lot of people got some hands-on with it, and it wasn't good. Um, it wasn't good? I, like, it the last time they showed it, I heard good things. Like when they demoed Thief uh, last year, yeah. I think it um, was. What I was seeing from it was that uh, they were showing some stuff. A lot of people liked it. It's cool. But I also read a story about, uh, I believe it was from IGN, one of their producers got sick while he was using it and like, threw up or something like that because it was just weirding him out. And I could see that happening pretty pretty easily, giving you vertigo and crazy stuff like that. So, yeah, that's kind of going to be one of the pitfalls from these mm. these uh, virtual well, reality sites. That, that sounds to me like maybe they... <sighs> Because remember that was the big thing for um, for the the rift was super low latency so that you wouldn't get that kind of well one so it just looked and responded better but also to prevent the kind of dizziness from the delayed reaction that VR sets were have been played with and I thought Morpheus had fixed that too maybe it was just bad uh, software update that was at the thing but um I don't know. 
or maybe the maybe the hopefully the producer is just ultra sensitive and the rest of us would be fine. I don't know. Yeah, well, hey, that that could be the case too. Because I'm be really the, excited about Morpheus. I want to see that. I want to see this VR really start taking hold. And Morpheus is great for for putting it, for planning to put it along with the home consoles with the PS4. It is still the plan, as far as I'm aware. Um, oh, yeah. So, and that that would really get it into a lot of people's hands and get a lot of developers interested in it, who are already interested in it. Uh, yeah. And I think what we're going to see with the PS4 and the Xbox Ones, just like the Xbox 360 and PS3, that had a really long. That was on shelves for a long time. I mean, those those consoles were out for what, like six six years before they even really started announcing the other ones, mm-hmm. um, which which if you looked at, like, the Super Nintendo... Well, the Nintendo was out forever, but, like, the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis, those were, like, four years of uh, console time, and then they started coming out with the new stuff. PlayStation, that was out for a while, too, wasn't it? But uh, Yeah, um, I, I mean, I had heard time. with the PS3 era, or at least the Sony with the PS3 had already decided that they were going to plan for a longer... to so start uh, stretching these out. They would design the system, put a little bit more in up front so that they could hopefully stretch out the tech longer. Which, yeah, that's fair. If it still mm-hmm. works very well, if it's still fun, it means that I don't have you, to... PS3 and Xbox 360 are still pretty damn good. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and there was a jump in graphics, but it's not, not that big. Yeah, their lifespan's not even over yet. The games it's not are like working. it's not like between Super Nintendo and PlayStation. I mean, that was an amazing jump in graphics. Uh, yeah. PlayStation to PlayStation Two, there was a good jump in dra- graphics, but it wasn't a you know crazy. Uh, PlayStation Two to PlayStation Three, yeah, they started polishing it up, but I, I don't know if PlayStation Three to PlayStation Four is that huge of a jump. But it, it's definitely you know, not because you you remember uh, they used to. T- talk early on the prototypes for the next PlayStation was stacking, combining the power of nine of the previous. Yeah, and they, they were talking about, oh, the PS4, it's going to do twice the graphical power. <laughs> uh, yeah. not, not nine times, so... yeah. So, so I don't know, let us so know what nice, you think. But... Oh, is there anything else that we missed out of Tokyo Game Show, or are there any of those games you're really looking forward to? Hit us up, comments down below. Of course, at WordsMyFace on Twitter, WordsMyFace at gmail.com, and... Google Plus and Facebook, all good ways to get a hold of us. But that's going to do it for us tonight. I think we ran a little bit late, but we had a lot to talk about. A lot. We did. Gotham was awesome, and Brendan missed out by not watching it. You missed out by not watching Scorpion. You could have watched that too. I'm glad I didn't watch it. (laughs) You're just glad. You you had no (laughs) excuse. I had a reason not to watch it for not watching Gotham. (laughs) Gotham was awesome, all I know. But uh, I bet you it's on demand, so you should check out your on demand and uh, watch it. But yeah, if you haven't watched it. Um, so, as always, I'm Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint. You think we are? Yeah. <laughs> Right, and I think my eyelid flipped inside out. Yeah, it did. Look at that. That's weird. Look at that. Look at that. Like the bottom of my eyelid went in. Now it's back to normal. That's really weird. That's how hard I head banged. Tuesday night special. Woo!